Hello students, um, so up until last class we looked into the application of a vector calculus in, um, in um, mechanics basically. So um, using the vector calculus you can be able to express uh, things like velocity, acceleration um, uh, in some vector notation. So today we will continue with those things and uh, we will see um, there are several other concepts like momentum, angular momentum, uh, aerial velocity or some equations of motion of um, of some particle under some kind of uh, law uh, basically uh, can also be expressed uh, using um, the concepts of vector calculus. So, today we will uh, start with um, aerial velocity and then we will move to momentum and uh, then we will try to um, write the equation of motion of some uh, of some particles. So, we will see how we can do that. So, to begin with uh, let me uh, give you a formal definition of the aerial velocity. So, when I say aerial velocity it basically means so aerial velocity. So, the aerial velocity basically the aerial uh, sorry uh, I need to correct the definition. So, spelling basically aerial yes a r e a l velocity. So, the aerial velocity velocity of a point p about the point O, the origin of the reference system of the reference system is the time rate of change is the time rate of description or change basically description of the vector area swept by the line OP. So, what do we mean by it? So, we basically mean that uh, suppose we have a line uh, we, this is our reference uh, line O x and uh, this is our given curve um, and uh, I so this this basically will be our point P. So, this is our vector r and uh, this is our point let us say uh, q and this is r plus uh, delta r and uh, this is our angle theta and that is basically theta plus delta theta and uh, suppose uh, here we have a we have a tangent. So, here we have a tangent. So, this is actually n and v. So, uh, what, the, what, what it means is that the aerial velocity um, of a point p. So, this is our point p about the point o. Uh, the which is basically the origin for the reference system uh, is the time rate of description of the vector area. So, this is basically the vector area in this direction. So, this is our r, this is r plus delta r. So, this is the vector area that is being this is the vector area that is being swept out by the vector o p and that is actually uh, the, the, the description the time rate description of the vector area uh, is actually uh, called as the aerial velocity. So, how do we write in terms of the vector equation? So, um, uh, we start with um, let us say um, proof basically. So, a small proof. So, we consider consider a general so, consider a general case of motion. So, basically this particle p is moving along this curve. However, we assume that consider a general case of motion of the point p of the point p when its path is not necessarily not necessarily a plane curve 
all right and now let p and q be the two positions of the particle of the particle at uh, uh, at uh, the time t and t plus delta t at the time t and uh, t plus delta t and uh, let r and delta r, r plus delta r be their position vectors be their position vectors all right so then um, then if this area is delta a so if this area so if this area so if this whole area is delta a so if i call this uh, area as delta a so let me write if uh, delta a denotes the area of the triangle so since delta r since delta r is a very small arbitrary uh, increment so then in that case this uh, opq is actually forming a triangle so it's not actually a curve this pq it's basically considered as, as a as a line because uh, this increment is considered to be very small in a uh, in a very small increment of time so delta t delta r they are considered in very small quantity so basically delta a is the area of the triangle o p q right so we know that we know that uh, the area of a triangle is given by 1 by 2 times uh, 1 by 2 r which is basically this vector times um, or cross product with r plus delta r right and uh, this is basically 1 by 2 r cross r plus 1 by 2 r cross delta r so since r cross r is 0 vector so this is 0 vector plus this quantity so ultimately we have is um, 1 by 2 r cross product with delta r all right and uh, now if i define the so the rate of change of uh, so the for, uh, the definition says the time rate of description of so the time rate of this uh, change of, of this uh, area of this description of the vector area will be basically we have to take da dt delta a delta t because uh, that's what uh, that's what we are um, uh, denoting the rate of change of uh, uh, of the area so by the vector uh, op and um, just for the notation point of view i think it's a it's a good idea to take it as small delta a, just for the sake of notation so small delta a, small delta a. so we are basically in delta uh, um, how to say uh, notation so delta delta this delta so i will also take it as small delta all right so it's it's basically notation but it makes the whole thing look uh, uh, how to say nicer in a way so delta a by delta t is equals to since uh, delta t is uh, is a, is a scalar we can put this delta t uh, here so delta r by delta t now if i take uh, delta uh, delta t goes to 0 so proceeding with uh, delta t going to 0 we will have a limit uh, this this thing will actually reduce to we don't we don't have to write the limit we can write simply as d a d t is equals to 1 by 2 r cross product with d r d t so that means the required therefore therefore the required area velocity therefore the required the required aerial velocity which is basically the time rate this dt is signifying the time rate of description of the area swept by the vector op right so this is basically the time rate of description so the aerial velocity is basically 1 by 2 r cross product with dr dt 
and this is the required aerial velocity um, uh, for this uh, for this point uh, P, um, with whose position vector is given by vector r. All right, and uh, similarly, um, we can calculate. Um, we can calculate. So here in my lecture note, I have also calculated the moment basically. So how do we calculate the moment? Um, so so this this proof is complete up up to here. Let me also give you the moment. Uh, so the moment. You may have studied these things in your physics uh, course. So the moment about O of the velocity vector of the velocity vector velocity vector say v. So, this is not the aerial velocity, this is the usual velocity vector v considered localized considered localized along the tangent line along the tangent line at p is by definition. So, the moment is basically a moment O, uh, the, uh, the moment about O. So, the moment the moment of the of the particle about O uh, of the uh, of the velocity vector basically. So, the moment of the velocity vector um, considered as a lo uh, considered uh, localized along the tangent vector and it is given by. So, by definition it is given by R cross V right. Uh, and its direction, its direction being at right angles or perpendicular basically right angles to the plane of R and V. All right. So, it is actually at the right angle uh, to the plane of R and V and uh, if we want and if we consider this as the, so this is our N. So, if we consider this, so this as the perpendicular whose length is uh, small p. So, if uh, p is the length of the perpendicular O N, so I can write if small p is the length of the perpendicular length of the perpendicular uh, o n to the tangent at p then in that case since uh, r cross v is perpendicular to the plane of uh, r and v i can be able to write r cross v is parallel to that uh, normal and uh, that is basically p times small p times small v small v is basically the magnitude of this velocity times n cap because if r cross v is perpendicular to the plane of r and v then it must be parallel to uh, the normal in a way and these are basically the scalars that signifies that uh, it's basically a normal all right so here uh, uh, we can uh, so here basically where v small v is the speed of the particle or of the point p of the point or particle whatever you prefer of the particle p and uh, n is the unit vector in the direction of direction of normal to the plane of r and vector v. So, that means basically, so that means we can write thus, I can write uh, r cross v, um, r cross v is equals to, uh, is equals to uh, p v n. So, that means from here I can write 2 times 1 uh, 2 times 1 by 2 r cross v 
p v n. So, this v is scalar and this is nothing but 2 times aerial velocity aerial velocity which is equals to p times v times n. So, this v is speed actually and this shows that uh, this shows that this is nothing but moment of v about o. So, this is actually our moment of v about o given by this formula and that is actually twice the aerial velocity. So, this is one of the important formulas uh, of uh, in this uh, motion of uh, motion of a particle on a curve and here we can see that uh, with the help of vector calculus we can be able to show that the aerial velocity is half the moment of the velocity of the particle uh, at the point uh, velocity of the particle p uh, about the point o or about the origin o. So, this is another important result that we can express using the vector calculus. It would also help if you have some knowledge of uh, physics from your previous uh, plus 2 level uh, just to make these things uh, a little bit more clear. All right. Um, next is uh, next is uh, momentum and uh, linear momentum, and then we will also write uh, Newton's second law of motion using uh, vector calculus so, or vector notation, basically. So, what do we mean by momentum? Momentum. So, the definition you must remember uh, by momentum m by momentum capital M which is a vector uh, of a moving particle of a moving particle particle at any time at any time we mean that we mean the vector m times v where m is the mass and uh, v is the velocity velocity of the particle right and uh, in notation or uh, we write simply just write we write capital M is equals to small m times capital V. So, small m basically is the mass of the particle and uh, um, we mean the vector m v where m is the mass of the particle and v is the velocity of the particle. So, for example, um, if you have let us say um, an iron ball and if you just touch it on your hand then it would not hurt you that much. So, suppose the weight of the iron ball is like um, uh, 500 grams. So, if you just touch it with your hand then it would not hurt your hand, but uh, if you throw it um, that ball on your hand then there is a strong possibility that it will hurt your hand. The thing is that uh, since it got some velocity the momentum is higher. So, when it is hitting that is when you are feeling the feeling the blow actually. So, even though the mass uh, is um, is very huge if the velocity is not uh, is not high then in that case uh, the momentum will always be small so um, that's why when 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 something hits us or when someone get hit by uh, something then in that case that at that point momentum is high basically because the velocity was high so momentum is uh, directly proportional to the velocity or it uh, depends on the velocity basically so higher the velocity is higher the momentum would be and uh, m is the mass of course uh, so, um, of course, it also depends on mass. So, if your mass is um, is big and if the velocity is high then the blow will be higher and if the mass is small and um, velocity is high then at that time also the blow will be higher, but uh, it would not be as uh, high as when you had a bigger mass. So, um, mass also plays an important role, but uh, in case of momentum um, I would say that velocity plays an important role. So, because uh, velocity can increase and decrease and uh, based on that uh, for a given mass the momentum can also increase or decrease. All right. Uh, now, uh, next we define the moment of a momentum the moment 
of a momentum. You probably know all these things. Uh, it's it might be a recapitulation from your physics class, but uh, I, I'm I'm just uh, writing the advantages of vector calculus here. So if uh, m be the momentum, if m be the momentum of a particle p, momentum of a particle, let's say uh, p, at any instant. and uh, O be any point, then uh, O p, so then the vector O p cross m. So, this is not necessarily origin. So, this, this can be any arbitrary point. So, I could take a q which uh, um, or let us let us keep it as uh, O. So, O p cross m is equals to vector h because this is a vector, this is a vector. So, the cross product would definitely be a vector uh, is called the moment of momentum or sometimes they are also called as angular momentum. of the particle about O. All right. So, this is called the angular momentum of the particle about O. Now, um, and uh, so here basically, so here O p is the position vector of the uh, of the point uh, P uh, about O. So, with respect to O, O p is the position vector and uh, in case and in case o is the origin in case o is the origin origin then this can be written as vector r times capital m which is basically cap vector r cross product with m times v so this can be written as m uh, m times r cross d r d t. So, v can be written as d r d t and this is basically our angular momentum. So, m uh, the momentum cross product with d r d t or m times r cross d r d t is basically your uh, angular momentum. So, if I go back to this formula where I had the aerial velocity. So, basically aerial velocity and angular velocity. So, I can take uh, 2 times aerial velocity. So, this is basically uh, 2 times m times aerial velocity. So, that is basically our angular momentum all right and uh, so the thing is, and an another thing is um, angular momentum will be different for every point uh, that we choose um, this this o if we choose o as a different different vector point then in that case this op vector will change and uh, then of course our um, our uh, uh, angular momentum will change. So, these are the small uh, here and there details which you have to be careful about. So, here if we choose uh, instead of all, a different point then in that case this angular momentum will change. So, um, yeah this is uh, our moment of momentum. The next uh, topic is um, the next topic is um, Newton's second law. Newton's second law. of motion. So, you probably uh, heard about there are three, law, three laws of motion and when you say three uh, laws of motion it's, uh, it is um, it, it obviously means that uh, we are talking about Newton's uh, three laws of motion because everything around us they obey Newton's uh, laws of motion. So, the first one we all we know that uh, um, uh, it's called uh, law of inertia. So, if a body is in is in motion, then it will remain in the motion. If it is in rest, then it will remain in the rest, unless it is being uh, um, how to say um, compelled by some external force to change its uh, state. And uh, the second law is that the force is perpendicular, uh, force is proportional to um, proportional to acceleration, basically. And uh, uh, and the third law is um, is um, 
uh, that uh, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So these are the three basic laws uh, which has a huge, I mean which has huge, huge, huge application everywhere around you. So anything that is moving, uh, it has in one way or another some application of uh, or direct application of Newton's law, uh, laws of motion. So um, uh, basically all three of them are important, but today we will just uh, derive uh, or learn the second law of motion. So the second law of motion says that um, the time rate, so the statement is the time rate of change, rate of change of momentum of momentum of a particle is proportional is proportional to the impressed force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts all right so if p is the impressed force or if p is the applied force then in that case let's call p because if you are applying a force then it has a direction because if you apply a force and expect the change to happen in this direction that will not happen. So, the, when you apply the force in a certain direction the change would also happen in that direction. So, the force is a vector quantity. So, it is it is always having a direction. So, that is why P is the force which is chosen as a vector and it is directly proportional to the momentum. Momentum is a vector quantity because it involves acceleration uh, sorry velocity. And, uh, m is basically the velocity capital m v t so i can i can change this uh, proportionality to a constant k times m dv dt so rate of change of velocity and uh, i can write this as k m a where k is the constant is a scalar constant uh, given constant of pr proportionality m is the mass and uh, uh, a is the acceleration. So, next if we choose if we choose the unit of force unit of force as 1 which produces in a unit mass which produces in a unit mass unit acceleration unit acceleration then our k will be constant then k will be 1. So, of course, it is constant then k will be 1 and hence we will have p is equals to m times a. So, this is basically our Newton's second law of motion. So, that means force is equals to mass into acceleration and uh, this means that uh, um, acceleration produced in a motion of a particle of a constant mass has the same direction as the force producing it. So, it will happen the change will happen in the direction of the force and this equation is called as the equation of motion of a particle. So, this today, um, so this is uh, an another uh, application of vector calculus or we saw that how with the help of vector calculus we can be able to write Newton's uh, second law of motion. So, these are some of the applications of, um, of vector calculus in the applied uh, in applied mathematics or in mechanics. In the next class, we will continue with that and if time permits, then we will move on to our next topic. So, I thank you for your attention today and I will see you in the next class.